He slipped on the ice, his car spun and smacked right into my driver's side door. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is probably going to be a miscarriage. And so I just started breaking down right there. Hey guys, welcome back to the Nicholas Nook. I'm Jess and today I will be sharing with you my eight week pregnancy update. So my eighth week of pregnancy has been the most upsetting and the scariest week so far. And so I just wanted to jump on and tell you guys a little bit about what's been going on and why this week has really been just so tremendously upsetting. So today I am actually nine weeks and three days. I don't have a belly shot from week eight because well, I just, I didn't have the opportunity. There was a lot going on. And so I am not going to show a belly shot in this video because now I am nine weeks. And just to stay true to, you know, making sure that everything is truthful out there for you guys, I am not going to do an eight week belly shot because I didn't take one. If you haven't watched my pregnancy updates up to this point, I will have those linked down in the playlist below so that you can go ahead and catch up. That way you can see kind of what symptoms I was having from weeks one through seven and then how I was feeling during week eight leading up to week nine. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into what has been going on recently. So just to touch on week seven, during that week I realized that a lot of my symptoms had gone away and that I was feeling really good. Even in week six, I had felt more energized and I just felt really good. I wasn't really feeling, you know, like I was pregnant. So I was like, oh, that must be because, you know, I'm eating really well, I'm exercising, I just, this is gonna be a great healthy pregnancy. So I just kind of brushed it off because I didn't really know what else to expect because this is my first pregnancy. And a lot of women that I had talked to said that they were not sick or anything and they had healthy babies. And so I didn't really think too much of it. Everyone kept asking me how I was feeling and I was feeling great. So yes, I was tired here and there and I had some headaches and things, but nothing to make me feel like I just, I wasn't feeling awful. So when I was eight weeks and one day, I was on my way to work. If you don't know, I am a teacher and I live in South Dakota and I have to get on the interstate to get to work in the morning. So I was on my way to work on these icy slippery roads. We had had a really icy freezing rain overnight and I was just on my way to work. I would say that I was pretty much grandma driving because I was I saw people off on the side of the road, off in ditches that had slipped on the ice and I did not want to be one of those cars off on the side of the road. So I was taking my time on my way to work. All of a sudden, a group of cars came flying up behind me, just driving crazy because I mean, Come on, which really made me very angry because I was doing my job, but somebody came up, sure enough, he slipped on the ice, his car spun and smacked right into my driver's side door. Immediately I knew that I was hit, it was just this loud bang, and I knew that I had hit my head because I felt the impact on my head. All of a sudden I found myself missing a guardrail, going right off down into this snowy ditch, just going on forever. It was so slippery that my car would not stop until I got to one of the ranch or farm fences. So luckily it didn't make another impact when I hit that fence, it just kind of went up and under. But regardless, I was just in a daze, I was really freaking out because I was like, oh my goodness, I just got hit and I am off the road, off the interstate, all the way out where kind of nobody can see me. Because I was in such a daze, I realized that, okay, it's cold outside, I need to roll up my window. And so I go to roll up my window. I didn't realize that my head had smashed the window and shattered it completely. But I realized eventually that my window was not there. So I had seen the glass shards around the edge of my window where my window had shattered. I looked at my teacher bag, found my cell phone and called 911 immediately. And then right after that, I called my husband. While I was on the phone with 911, the driver of the other car and a witness came running up through the snow to me to check on me to see if I was okay. Thank goodness. Luckily, I was okay, but I had a huge knot on the back of my head right here, and then another one, and you guys probably can't see, and my hair's in the way anyway, but right behind my ear. So I had a tiny one here, 
and then a huge goose egg knot right here on my head. I don't know how I didn't get hurt more, but I was not cut up or anything except for one little piece under my nose. I did have a little bit of blood under my nose and I could feel that it kind of hurt, but honestly, in the big scheme of things, that was nothing. The biggest thing was that I had a huge headache right away. And so that was my biggest concern as well as my baby. The good news is that I was only eight weeks and so I knew that my baby was really well protected down there just because when you're that early, the baby is behind the pelvic bone still. And so I knew my seatbelt didn't really kind of cut in right there or anything. So I wasn't too concerned, but I obviously wanted the baby to be checked out. And then I was seriously concerned about my head because I almost had a headache on the left side of my head only. And so that was really bizarre. And I felt really kind of in a daze. I was conscious, I was talking, I was alert. I was able to call 911 and my husband. And then I immediately called the school and told them, hey, I need someone to cover my class. I just got in an accident. And so that was extremely terrifying for me because I don't know, I just, it's so crazy how things happen because as you guys know, our little one, our foster daughter that we had for 10 months went to a new placement. I mean, just a couple of weeks before this happened. So she was not in the car, but it was crazy because I looked back and her booster seat is still in there. And it's just funny how things happen because that could have been so much worse. So the fact that, you know, I was conscious, I was okay, I had a huge headache and a huge knot that I needed to have checked out, but our little one wasn't in the car and I didn't think anything happened to baby. So it just, I felt immediately like, oh my gosh, I'm so thankful, Lord. This could have been really, really bad. So anyway, I waited there for a little while and the other driver of the car was okay. And he was a very apologetic, but he was very concerned. And I told the witness right away who was asking me questions. I think he was trying to make sure that I was alert and that everything was checking out okay. I did tell him that I was eight weeks pregnant. And so immediately, as soon as law enforcement got there, he was like, she's eight weeks pregnant. She's got to get looked at. And he was very adamant about getting me checked out just to make sure that everything was okay. So I am very, very grateful for the people who were there helping out. I just felt very well taken care of. One of the police officers went ahead and just ripped my door open. And it was kind of funny because I really could have climbed out the passenger side. And I told him that. I told him, I said, I'm really okay. I think I can just climb out the passenger side and he was like, no, no, let me, let me just rip this door off. It's okay. And so he was like ripping with all of his might, ended up tearing my door in half so I could see the inside of the door panel. And it was kind of comical, honestly, because I think he just wanted to be like, you know, this tough guy ripping off the door. They don't get to rip off doors every day. And I think he could see that I was just fine. So he just wanted to rip my door off so that I didn't have to climb over. So sweet. So anyway, I did go in the ambulance, but they didn't take me anywhere. They just sat and checked my vitals and made sure that everything was good. But they did recommend that I go to the emergency room to be looked at, especially for my head and the baby. Chaz took me straight to the ER and we actually got an early ultrasound. My first ultrasound was scheduled to be at eight weeks, five days, and this happened eight weeks, one day. So it was four days early. So basically what they did is they checked my head first and made sure that I wasn't feeling dizzy or nauseous or anything like that. And the doctor said that I had a minor head injury and just to monitor it over you know, the next 24 hours. Unfortunately, because I am pregnant, I couldn't take any kind of painkillers whatsoever. I could only take Tylenol and Tylenol really does absolutely nothing. So I had this pounding headache that would not go away, but she did offer to do an early ultrasound. However, their technology was not as good as the local OBGYNs. So she did give me a heads up with that and said that they could only do the over the tummy and they probably wouldn't be able to see a whole lot, but she would be able to just kind of check to make sure that, you know, to see if everything looked pretty normal. So I said, absolutely, yes, please check on the baby. And she kind of just found it right there on the 
ultrasound screen and you could hardly see it. It was so tiny, it was kind of blurry. Again, the technology didn't seem very good. It seems like an older machine and it just, you really couldn't see a whole lot. But I could see a little bean in there. It was the cutest little thing. And I just, I was so excited just to know that, you know, when you, until you see that, it's not really, it's not really real, I guess. It is, but it isn't. And so to see your baby in there on the ultrasound, it was just such a magical moment for Chaz and I. So I will insert a clip of that here, just so you guys can see what our ultrasound was like at the emergency room. So we are at the ER. I did get in a car accident this morning. It was not my fault, but somebody hit me on the interstate and I completely went off into the snow. The roads were super icy today. We'll share it more later but I am at the ER right now to get my head checked out because my head completely shattered the window however since I am eight weeks pregnant now they said that they could possibly do an ultrasound so we are going to see how that goes and see if we can see anything I have not had my first ultrasound yet with my OB so this is kind of exciting bittersweet I guess you could say but yeah we'll see we just want to make sure and if we can see the baby just make sure everything is okay with the little one you know, this might be the first time we see our baby. Yeah, but... She said she might not be able to see it with this equipment. Yeah, we'll see. You can tell that you're going to be pregnant. So, this is your uterus. This is the space. I'm trying to get rid of your... Make a picture for you. Mm -hmm. So, this little peanut right there would be it. That's the baby? Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, don't breathe. Take a picture. So that was basically it. Again, you can't really see a whole lot, but I was grateful that she went ahead and checked, you know, to see what she could see using her machine. So anyway, she sent us on our way, and Chaz and I went and grabbed breakfast. My head at this point is still just pounding. We went and grabbed some more Tylenol, and I just, I was not feeling good. But I felt really bad that someone had to just jump in and cover my class during the morning time, and I had absolutely nothing ready. No sub plans, nothing ready. And luckily it was one of our literacy specialists who had jumped in, so she was texting me throughout the morning saying, you know, everything's good here, but I still felt bad. So I ended up going in, Chaz dropped me off, for the afternoon and I finished out the afternoon with my kiddos, but I just did not feel good. I mean, I just slammed my head on a car window and it shattered so that I just, I don't know, I shouldn't have gone in, I know. But I just, I felt bad and you know, I needed to be there with my kiddos because that's who I'm with every day. That's just, that's what I do. That's what I love. But I will say I ended up taking the next day off, which was a Friday because I just felt really crummy and I knew that I couldn't be the best teacher for those kids until I rested and recovered. I also knew that I was going to be sore the next day. I could already feel my neck getting sore from kind of slamming to the side. And so I knew that I would just have to rest for a little bit. So that's what I did. On Friday, I rested. I stayed at home and it was perfectly fine. I had a chance to set out sub plans on Thursday afternoon, so everything went smoothly. So my first prenatal visit was scheduled for Monday, and again, I was eight weeks, five days. So after school, I had Chaz meet me at my first prenatal visit, filled out a bunch of paperwork that talked about, you know, family medical history and history of pregnancies, which I have never been pregnant at all. So I had zero pregnancies before this one. This is my first pregnancy. So Chaz and I were all excited and we walked back to the ultrasound room. And first of all, our ultrasound tech was kind of cold. She just, she didn't smile. She didn't say anything really at all. She just kind of was like, okay, here, change into this and lay down here like very cold. So that made me feel kind of uncomfortable at the beginning. But anyway, I mean, I know that they're not supposed to say a whole lot anyway, but I mean, that was, I don't know. I felt like she could have been a little bit more warm and welcoming, I guess, to us when we first arrived. So anyway, that's besides the point. So I lay down and she said, okay, well, since you're eight weeks, five days, I'm going to go ahead and try the abdominal one first. And so that's what she did. So she had it on my belly and she was kind of looking around, but wasn't saying a whole lot again. She was very quiet. And so Chaz asked her, he said, can I film this? This is our first pregnancy. It's kind of exciting. And she goes, 
uh, not yet. And so we were kind of like, oh, okay. And so she said, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm not really seeing much. I'm gonna have to do a transvaginal ultrasound. So I was like, ah, okay, you know, I kind of expected it because I was still very early and I thought that she probably would say that since she can't really see a whole lot with the one on the belly anyways. So she had me get up, go do a urine sample, come back, and then we did the transvaginal. And again, Chaz asked her, well, can I film a little bit now? And so he was very nice about it. But she said, well, just a little bit. We're not supposed to film much. And so, of course, we respected that. But we did get a little snippet of the ultrasound, which I'll show here. And that was pretty much it. So I was just watching the screen, you know, they have this big TV screen up in front of where I was laying so that I could see what she was seeing on her screen. And she started looking around to the sides on the inside and she was measuring something on the sides, not the gestational sac. And so I was like, that's weird, but she wasn't saying anything about it. So I asked her, I said, well, what is that that you're measuring? And she said that I had cysts on my ovaries, but that they were small. So that was very normal for pregnancy. I have no idea if that's normal or not, but of course I was like, oh my gosh, I have ovarian cysts. I have, I never knew that. So that was kind of scary for me at first. I don't know, let me know down in the comments if that is something that is normal for pregnant women or not, or if that is something I should be concerned about. She really just kind of didn't really seem concerned about it at all. And so I was like, huh, that's weird, but I, I don't know. It's usually on those checklists where it says, have you ever had any of the following? Ovarian cysts is usually one of the check boxes. So I don't know if that's a cause for concern or not, but that was the first thing that she had told us that she found. I did tell her about the emergency room visit from my accident, and so she asked if they had seen a heartbeat, and I told her that they didn't have the right equipment, and so no, it was so far away and so tiny that we really couldn't see hardly anything, and that no, there wasn't a heartbeat. So she kind of was like, hmm, strange about it. And again, she didn't say much, but when she was looking at the baby, she measured and it said that I was measuring at six weeks, two days. Yep, six weeks, two days. And I was supposed to be eight weeks, five days. That is a huge difference, huge. So of course, I'm like, freaking out inside and I asked her, I said, well, why is it measuring six weeks? I'm supposed to be eight weeks, what's going on? And she was like, well, I don't know. And that's all she said. So I know she can't really say anything again, but she could have at least said, I don't know, anything, anything, but she hardly said anything. So of course I worried more. While we were looking at the screen, she did not point out any kind of heartbeat or anything. I didn't see anything moving. And again, she didn't really share a whole lot with us. We were just kind of like in silence while she was doing this and measuring and I don't know. It was a very uncomfortable experience for me for my first real ultrasound. So we went to this little room and waited for the doctor. And of course, the whole time I'm just asking Chaz, well, why is it measuring six weeks? Why is it measuring six weeks? It should be measuring eight, almost nine. I'm almost nine weeks. Why is it measuring so small? There's something wrong, there's something wrong. And so I'm freaking myself out, which for good reason, I will say, because that is not normal. So the doctor comes in and tells me right away, she says, hi, I am your doctor, and I just wanna let you know up front that this is not going to be a normal pregnancy. I was wondering why it was only measuring six weeks. So basically what she said is that either the baby stopped growing at six weeks, two days, and I am having a miscarriage, but my body hasn't realized it yet, or somehow, some way, I ovulated late. So she was asking about my cycles and if they have been irregular. I have been off of birth control for over a year, almost a year and a half, and so my cycles were very irregular, 
but they have evened out. I do have longer cycles now than I did before. So my cycles are about 31 days long, whereas they used to be 28, they are now 31, but that is not that long. So I was sitting there thinking, I have no idea how that's even possible to ovulate two and a half weeks later than normal. I just, I don't get it. I don't see how that could have happened. Looking at all of my dates from when my last menstrual cycle started and you know, just everything, all of my dates that I kind of help calculate where you should be at in your pregnancy, nothing was lining up. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, this is probably going to be a miscarriage. And so I just started breaking down right there because I knew that something was wrong. I know my body pretty well. I knew that unless there was some sort of miracle or something that was so crazy off that I didn't realize that this is not possible. And then of course I was, while I was feeling these emotions of just sadness and fearfulness, I also got a wave of like anger almost. And not with the baby, not with God, not with anyone. But just like, I don't know if it was because of my hormones or what, but I just, I feel like we are in a good place right now and that this was happening for a reason at the perfect time. We just bought a house. We just told our families. We just, everything was falling completely into place perfectly. And so I was kind of just like, what? How can this be happening? This, this can't be happening. And then I was kind of frustrated because I was like, well, maybe the ultrasound tech, she wasn't like to Chaz. <laughs> she wasn't very good anyway. I didn't feel like she did everything that she could do to measure that sack correctly and I don't know. That was the hardest moment for me. So, anyway, she ordered some blood work to be done to check my HCG levels. And so I had my blood drawn right there. And then I had to go back two days later and have it drawn again. And then I had to wait until Thursday to get results. So mind you, this has been four days now since I have gone to that appointment and now to the day that I find out my HCG levels. The doctor had said that I could be miscarrying, but that it's too early to tell, that we needed to get some blood work done in order to kind of, you know, just see how everything is progressing and my levels should double. When I got the results of my blood work, my levels did not double. They rose very slightly, but not nearly enough. They went from 25,152 to 26,032. So only about 900. That is nowhere near doubling. So I am sitting at a point right now where I am extremely confused. I don't know if my baby passed away at six weeks and my body hasn't realized it yet or I don't know. I'm just confused because my HCG levels are rising slightly. I feel like they would be dropping or maybe again, my body just hasn't realized it yet. So this has been not a good week to say the least. So honestly, I'm not sure when this video is gonna go up, but even if I do end up having a miscarriage, I am going to share these with you because I want you to know if you're going through the same thing too, that you're not alone and it's emotional and it's hard, but luckily over this past week or so, we have had kind of a chance to grieve a little bit, just kind of to prepare ourselves. I am not giving up hope by any means whatsoever. 
I am not giving up on this baby. I am continuing to take my prenatals. I'm continuing to do what I need to do to nourish my body with the best foods possible to give that baby just a second chance if it's, I don't know. I just, I'm not giving up on him or her. So I just want you to know if you're going through something similar that it's okay and that it is confusing and it's emotional and playing the waiting game is the worst part because I don't know if I should, I just, I want to know how I should be coping with everything, good or bad. So, so basically right now I am waiting to go get another ultrasound here in a couple of weeks. I will keep you guys posted as to how that goes unless I find out something else naturally. I, again, have had some time to kind of grieve a little bit with Chaz. I mean, that night when we came home, we just, we laid in bed and just cried. We basically just cried and cried. And he is so strong, you guys. He really just brought me peace. And of course, I'm still emotional. I still have hormones raging and everything. So, um, and it is just upsetting, but he is the best husband in the world. And you know, he just has really talked about that God has a plan and it's all in God's timing and that maybe, you know, something wasn't going on that was right with this child. If it happens to be a miscarriage, it's because my body knew something was not right. And so, I don't know, I think, you know, just talking with him really gives me peace with everything, of course, it's extremely hard to even think that our very first baby is not going to make it. I know that a lot of women go through this, and I don't think it's talked about enough. So I will keep you guys posted. I do appreciate prayers, and I know that everything will be okay one way or the other, but I just wanted to share that things don't always go according to your timing. They go according to his timing. And regardless of how this turns out, excuse me, regardless of how this turns out, I know that we have been very blessed. I know that a lot of women struggle with infertility and I think that it is such a blessing that we were able to conceive so early on. So trust me when I say I'm not taking that for granted. I know that a lot of women struggle with that. So I know that this whole experience is for a reason. And, you know, whether it turns out the way I was hoping it would or not, I think that it's important to stay faithful and strong, especially during these kinds of situations. But I also believe that it's okay to grieve. And I mean, people who go through this all the time, these women and men, the fathers, are experiencing a loss. And to me, I mean, the moment that I found out that I was gonna be a mom, I, I was a mom. I mean, yes, I've had a foster daughter, but I was truly a mom, a mother, from the moment that I found out. It was just the most incredible experience, and so I just, I'm praying that everything works out how, it, how I was hoping it would, but with these kinds of things that have been happening, with not seeing a heartbeat, baby measuring two and a half weeks too small, and my HCG levels are not doubling. It's not looking good. So please just stay tuned and I will share with you an update as soon as I have one. And also kind of going back to my pregnancy symptoms, I, I've lost them. My breasts are not tender anymore. 
I have not experienced nausea at all during the pregnancy, but I thought I would have probably had some of that by, by now. And I don't know, I'm not as fatigued. I feel completely normal. Here's the strange part. The strange part is that I have no cramping whatsoever and I haven't been spotting at all. So I do have this little glimmer of hope that everything's gonna be okay. But so far I have had zero cramping or spotting or bleeding whatsoever. So I'm hoping that's a good sign. Please keep us in your thoughts and prayers. And if you are going through something similar, I pray that you just stay strong through it and know that there is a reason for everything and that it is in his timing and he knows exactly what's going on with you and your body and he knows what's best for you. Just to trust in him and everything will be okay no matter what. Even if we have to take time to grieve and to deal with a loss, which I'm praying that I don't have to do, but unfortunately the signs are pointing at that right now. So I know that if you are eight weeks pregnant right now, this is probably not the kind of video that you wanted to hear. I get it. I absolutely get it. However, I think it is important to bring light to, and shed awareness on the fact that many women, I believe the statistic is one in four women, have a miscarriage. That is a lot of women and it's not really talked about. And so if you are eight weeks pregnant, I just, you are so blessed and so lucky and just keep that baby close to you and just, oh, I just, I love that for you and I'm so happy for you. But as a whole, I do think it's important for us to be aware that it does happen and it's okay to hurt and it's okay to feel frustrated and angry and just upset about it. And right now I'm in the stage of just being confused and waiting and that's so hard. It's so hard, you guys. And I've looked on forums and on other people's YouTube videos and just online, just everywhere to try to find some peace and comfort. And I am just trying to be realistic and share with you the facts and pray that everything's okay. And that's all I can do. So I hope this was helpful or just, I don't know, brought awareness to some of you guys out there. Please stay tuned for my upcoming updates. And I'm praying that they are good, healthy baby updates. And if they're not, you will be on our journey regardless. You are part of our family and we want to take you along with us no matter what the circumstances. So thank you guys for joining me today. Go ahead and click subscribe for our next update. Bye.